Consent. Consent is an issue that is becoming a growing topic for discussion, especially with stories such as Harvey Weinstein, R. Kelly, Bill Cosby hitting the headlines. We have all questioned the strength of consent. Like, can consent truly be given if you are being held captive in the R. Kelly case? And how do we qualify a sexual encounter? Is opening the door in your bathrobe a encounter such as in the Harvey Weinstein case and what should the statue of limitations be for a traumatic SA like in the Bill Cosby case. Statistics show that one in five women or one in 71 men will be essayed in their lifetime. As SA becomes more prevalent in society across all genders, the blurred lines surrounding the definition of consent are called into question. What is consent? How do we give it? And once we give it, can it be revoked? What is the best way to navigate sexual consent and negotiation? And that's what it is, negotiation. Where both parties discuss the parameters of what it is they're about to engage in. But what if both partners didn't have the open and honest discussion that they needed before they engaged in relations? Is monogamy the social status quo and is always implied? Or does monogamy in relationships need to be specifically and explicitly stated? Just as you would state your body type or your hair color before meeting somebody on a hot day from Tinder. Today we are going to be talking about the drama between the modern warrior who is a Native American TikTok activist and Chelsea Hart, a comedian, if you wanna use that term in the loosest way possible. From alleged SA to polyamory to hidden wives, miscarriages, abortions, and STDs, non-consensual monogamy, literally everything in the past two weeks has been popping off on TikTok. With so many twists and turns, it's honestly been exhausting to keep up with. I'm sure a lot of you who use TikTok will have found out about what happened between these two individuals against your own will, because it's literally been all over the app. So join me as we discuss all of these topics and more in my video essay, Deep in My Womb Lands. Hey, colonizer. I'm very sorry that our friendship has come to this. I may be pregnant with your child and you are apologizing for your communication. Informed consent does fucking matter. I know that I should have never gotten involved. I quite frankly want to just put this behind me and move forward with my life. You knew! You fucking knew! Deep in my womb, Lance. what is up it is your girl Paige. i hope that you guys are having a good day today right today's video is a little bit different it's a long one so i hope you guys have got your snacks because we have we are going from start to finish at the end of this video okay i'm going to have this entire saga wrapped up for you in a beautiful little bow so that there is literally no reason to go and watch this video anywhere else because i don't believe anyone here on youtube will be as comprehensive as i am about to be i will say i'm not going to mention certain other external people for the pure reason that those people no longer want to be involved in the dramas. It's causing them a little bit of stress. And because they're not directly involved, I'm not gonna include them. I don't know why, that makes no sense to you guys right now, but it makes sense to me. And if you know the drama, you probably know who I'm not going to be talking about, okay? With that being said, today's video is sponsored and is proudly sponsored by Atlas VPN. 
Atlas VPN is a virtual private network service, which basically protects you, your computer, no matter where it is that you decide to go. Especially if you're a person like me who goes on a lot of short trips, I am constantly taking my laptop with me absolutely everywhere. So I like to have Atlas VPN with me so that I can use a private network, especially when I'm logging into Wi-Fi connections out and about that I don't know. It keeps me and my information and my personal data secure. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount at the moment which means that you get a three-year subscription for just $1.99 per month and that's including the 30-day money-back guarantee time is running out on this particular offer so make sure that you guys click the link in my description box down below so that you guys can get your hand on this amazing deal one of the best things about Atlas VPN is that you can protect unlimited devices so when I'm out and about and my daughter's using my iPad I can make sure that she is on a secure virtual private network so that I know that while she's using my device no hackers can try and get in my device and get our personal details at this point Atlas VPN is literally a necessity for your entire family with some of the best speeds around so you would be absolutely crazy not to get the three-year subscription for $1.99 per month with the 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it boo which I assure you you will so don't forget to click the link in the description description box down below so that you guys can get your hands on this deal. The time on this offer is running out so make sure that you guys get it now. Thank you so much to Atlas VPN for sponsoring yet another video. I really appreciate your continued support and let's get straight into the video, shall we? Okay, so before we start, I feel like it's important to note the two most important people involved in this story, which is Lance Tosi, AKA Modern Warrior, and Chelsea Hart. Chelsea Hart is a 28 year old comedian from Alaska. They also dabbled in opera singing and was a professional street performer for three years. And they have performed in over 30 different countries. <laughs> However, now we just tend to know her as a social justice warrior TikToker who tends to have a comedic take when dragging white supremacists. The satanic little clam potato who shot two people with a four foot long hunting rifle is walking free. And other awful people who inhabit the app. They have over 1.6 million followers. I will, however, state for the record that they have recently changed over their previous she, they pronouns over to they, them pronouns. Many people believe it's because of how much hate and backlash that Chelsea Hart has actually received and that they are only now using they, them pronouns so that if anyone slips up on the aforementioned she, they pronouns, that they will just be completely discredited for misgendering them. Out of respect, I'll be trying my best to use they, them pronouns. However, if I do slip up as I have been writing this entire script as she, I will try my best to edit it out in post. But just know from the jump that this is a recent change and honestly, on sh short notice for me, at least with this video, it's gonna take me a minute to adapt. So I'm gonna try my best. With that being said, let's go to the next player, which is Lance Tosi, AKA Modern Warrior. Modern Warrior is a 31 year old activist and social media personality from the Navajo Nation nation of Arizona. An issue that is really near and dear to my heart is the living wage issue. I have a lot of family back on a Navajo Nation who are living in poverty, who are unemployed and or are working but cannot like survive and sustain their families. He is most popular for popularizing the phrase, hey colonizers. Hey colonizer. Yeah. I just don't like racists. Period. And he has over 2.7 million followers on TikTok. This has since decreased. He used to have 3 million plus followers on TikTok, but it has since decreased since this controversy and is continuing to go down. Like at this moment, I think he's lost over 600,000 followers. Lance now resides in Colorado and he was moved there from a very young age by his ma, who essentially moved him along with a bunch of other siblings to Colorado to get a better education. And Lance on his mom's wishes by actually achieving his master's degree of June last year. Both Lance and Chelsea's content is what you would call on TikTok call out content creators whose main fight is against social injustice towards various different minority groups by either highlighting bad behavior 
or teaching their following how they can help support and advocate for all of these various different minority groups. The Modern Warrior seems to put a specific spotlight on how it is that they can support financially the communities of which they have taken from. But they both help marginalized communities, albeit in different ways and different approaches, as Modern Warrior seems to take a very direct approach, whereas Chelsea Hart will basically drag them for filth in a comedic way all across TikTok. So, what happened between these content creators? A mess, babes. An actual mess. Chelsea and Lance were initially friends and have been friends with each other for just over a year. Eventually, they took things a little further and over the last six months, they have been kind of more romantically connected. Mostly long distance over phone and text. However, they have met a few times in person. He was supportive to Chelsea when they were having panic attacks due to the loss of their baby. That was approximately one year prior. And after that moment, their relationship according to Chelsea, grew deeper. During the talking stage of their relationship, Lance brought up the idea of polyamory because he'd been listening to a podcast that kind of influenced him, maybe that that's what he wanted to do with his life. When he spoke to Chelsea about it, Chelsea basically flat out said, no, this is not something that I would like to do. The topic essentially was set aside to be discussed later. However, Chelsea pretty much felt as if maybe he just, you know, forgotten about it and moved on. Or the words that they used was oblige whatever that means. Chelsea then flew to Denver, Colorado to meet Lance and they both had unprotected relations because Chelsea was under the impression that they were gonna be entering into a monogamous relationship. Now, why do I even know all of this? All this information about the intricate details of somebody else's relationship. Because for some bizarre reason, Chelsea thought that it was acceptable to tell the whole world on TikTok. Why? Why might you ask? Because they were scorned. I have been friends with Lance Sosi for the last year. And for the last six months, we were romantically involved, uh, working towards meeting each other and seeing if we could pursue a long-term relationship. Uh, Lance became my friend very soon after I lost the baby and I'd been having panic attacks for the first time in my life and he supported me beautifully through those things and um, really made me feel safe and eventually I fell for him and told him and I kept having the panic attacks and he just kept telling me to open up and trust him and he wanted to protect me and I really think he wanted to protect me. I really think he wanted to do good. Um, and I really trusted him. So basically the reason that Chelsea decided to divulge the intimacies of their relationship with Lance was because the same day that Chelsea had came home, they saw a video uploaded to Lance's TikTok of him on a date with another woman. When confronted, Lance simply said, I was going to tell you. Now please remember this lady's face because we are going to be circling back to this individual towards the end. So remember it, remember it, put a pin in it. In the next set of TikToks, Chelsea says that Lance basically violated their body in ways that they did not consent to and that they did not consent to having unprotected relations with multiple people. They also said that there is no way that Lance could have misinterpreted them and their intentions with him. Chelsea states that they had been learning Navajo, bought lingerie, bought gift cards, all for him. They reiterate that they did not consent to that kind of relations and continues with i don't believe it makes it sa i don't know that it does lance violated my body in a way i didn't consent to i did not consent to unprotected with multiple partners um there is no way that he could have misinterpreted my intentions with him i was explicit i had been learning navajo for him i had bought lingerie for us months ago for, to, for me to wear for him. I had bought him gift cards for Christmas, um, all for him to buy things for us when we're together. Um, this was extremely romantic and extremely personal and extremely vulnerable for me. And 
I was taken advantage of in that trust in a way that I just didn't consent to. I did not consent to that. I didn't. I don't know if that legally makes it assault and I don't want to say that it does. They also state that they had bought tickets to visit Lance twice and that Lance had cancelled on them twice. And that Lance had told another girl that Chelsea was okay with polyamory when they were not. And later on in the six months, a couple times you'd started wondering about. It was later on, it wasn't in the beginning, it was later on. It was a couple months before I saw you. I told you no. I told you no and you knew how much you meant to me. And we could have talked about it later. I did not consent to that weekend as we had. I didn't. That is the violation of trust that I'm talking about. As he also misrepresented what he was doing to another woman, he told her that I was perfectly okay with polyamory while I wasn't. He knew I wouldn't be and he told her I was. This is lies and manipulation. This is what he's being accused of. Now this opened up possibly for me one of the most interesting conversations to ever take place on TikTok regarding consent, informed consent and non-monogamy. Many people feel as if because Lance had not openly said to Chelsea that he was interested in having multiple partners that that constitutes as an informed consent. However, I'm not entirely sure that I agree. I think it's bad for us to blur the lines of consent in such a way because we all know that anyone who doesn't get consent from any party for any kind of relations is deemed as a predator or that is predatory behavior. And likening what happened in this situation with Chelsea to SA, to me is a slap in the face to anyone who has been SA'd or R-worded. So let me outline why. So we have consent. Consent is an agreement. According to Wikipedia, they define consent as this. Consent occurs when a person voluntarily agrees to the proposal or the desires of another. It is a term in common speech with specific definitions that are used in such fields as law, medicine, research, and relations. The acronym for relations consent is FRIES. It must be freely given, as in the person is agreeing to do the act upon their free will, reversible, it can be revoked at any time, even during, informed, the person must be well aware of what the act will entail with clear language, enthusiastic, the person actually has to want to do that with you, they can't be reluctant to do it, and specific. Consent must be specific and only using the data slash information provided to you. Okay, so let's break this down further. A lot of people are saying that what happened between Lance and Chelsea was uninformed consent because they did not consent to having relations unprotected with an individual who had multiple partners. That this was a desire of Lance's. I would argue that Lance's question in regards to polyamory was to see if Chelsea would have been a good fit in his life in terms of a full-blown relationship. Because for all intents and purposes, Lance had made no emotional commitments to any of the people. And none of them could truly classify themselves as girlfriends or even having the what are we exclusivity conversation. So without this conversation actually taking place by both parties involved, can monogamy still be implied? Well, Today, monogamy is the most mainstream approach to relationships. And that is across many societies, but it is by no means universal. Many cultures across the world practice polygamy, which is a marriage between more than two people. And in history, the majority of pre-industrial people engaged in some form of polygamy, typically in the form of polygyny, which is essentially one man with multiple wives. Most of us have learned that monogamy is the normal or traditional style of relationship and the non-monogamy is an alternative when in fact non-monogamous relationships have been around for centuries that being said in society today though monogamy is pretty much treated as the default setting for relationships this is the common understanding of the way that a relationship will fall from the initial meeting to becoming exclusive to confessions of love to moving in together to eventually getting married and having kids all of this is not entirely tied to the 
concept of monogamy. I mean, you can have all of these things and not be monogamous, especially in that transition period of the initial meeting to becoming exclusive. As many people can have multiple relations with people without taking that step to make it exclusive. In fact, many people would say that non-monogamy was an essential format for the art of dating and to the dating process as a whole. And Chelsea themselves defines their relationship status to Lance as dating. So going back to the relations consent acronym FRIES, does this situation apply? Freely given, the person must be doing the act upon their free will. Chelsea decided that they were happy to have relations with Lance. Reversible, it can be revoked at any time, even during the act. Chelsea did not choose to revoke consent at any point. Informed, the person must know what it is that they are agreeing to with clear language. Chelsea was aware that they were agreeing to have relations with Lance. They had mental capacity and accepted. Enthusiastic, the person actually wants to do this with you. Chelsea was happy and not reluctant to have relations with Lance. Specific, the consent should be specific and only use the information slash data told to you. The information and data was that Lance was interested in having a polygamous relationship to which Chelsea declined. Both of them continued to date without exclusivity being discussed. However, Lance wasn't informed that exclusivity was an important factor for Chelsea before they engaged in relations. It was not explicitly stated, it was implied. And if exclusivity was a fundamental necessity for consensual relations with Chelsea, that should have been explicitly stated because even by today's standards and social norms, monogamy isn't the standard for relations whilst dating. But beyond all of that, you can still conduct a polyamorous lifestyle with multiple partners, even on your own. WebMD defines this as solo polyamory, and they state, solo polyamory includes people who don't have a primary partnership, but date multiple people. They remain mostly independent in their personal lives. But can you be solo poly without explaining that to every person it is that you meet? Well, that's a matter of ethics. There are three to four general criteria it is that solo polys use to identify themselves as solo poly. One, which is single living and being off the relationship escalator. The relationship escalator being the format that I discussed previously, initially meeting, becoming exclusive, moving in, getting married, having kids, the whole shebang. Because solo poly people tend to consider themselves as their own primary relationship. So in most polyamorous couples, there are partner one and partner two and then the unicorn. Or maybe they all mutually share, you know, the same relationship with each other. There are various different relationship dynamics that you can have in polyamory. But with solo polyamorous people, they see themselves as their primary relationship. As in, they love themselves first, honey. So that essentially excuses the need for the hierarchy that can be involved in the more conventional polyamorous relationships. They prioritize personal autonomy, agency and independence over their relationship units. They value privacy or they are introverted. Solo poly people can use any combination of what it is that we just discussed in any amount to identify a solo poly. Many people don't tend to realize that there are multiple criteria in use. So there's often confusion in discussions as to what solo poly is, especially when people only declare one criteria and none of the others. But in reality, this is just like the baseline of what the criteria is to be quote unquote solo poly. As it is self-identification and people use a unique mix of everything and a little bit of extra spice, who knows? It's confusing, I know, but the point is that there is literally no correct way to be solo poly, at least for now. However, around the time that Chelsea put out content about Lance, putting him on blast, Lance uploaded his now deleted apology video. In this video, he apologizes to Chelsea for, and quote, their friendship coming to this and also for not being an effective communicator and for the pain that he has caused them. He also asks for his followers to give him some grace and let him grow. Hello, beautiful people. I just want to take a second to apologize to Chelsea. I'm very sorry that our friendship has come to this. 
I'm very sorry for not being the effective communicator that I wanted to be. And most importantly, I'm extremely sorry for the pain that I've caused you. Nothing I can say will remedy that. And to everyone else, I'm sorry I let you down. I do hope, though, you will give me the grace to grow and learn from this opportunity. Have a good day. Chelsea almost immediately made a response video to this stating, I may be pregnant with your child and you are apologizing for your lack of communication. Instead, Chelsea asks, why don't you apologize for taking advantage of my vulnerability to get in my pants? This clip also is where the meme womb lands come from because she says, I have an ache in my womb lance but obviously because it came like so every, everybody thought it was womb lands i thought it was womb lands i ain't gonna i ain't gonna trip i thought it was womb lands too like that's what i thought i may be pregnant with your child and you are apologizing for your communication i have an ache that lives deep in my womb lands and sometimes i just cry from my soul about it and I sent you so many messages opening up to you about that. You knew. You knew. You fucking knew. You fucking knew. I never would have opened up my body that intimately to you. With the trauma that gives me anxiety attacks. My anxiety that manifests in my stomach and I puke. From that trauma. I still puke. I still feel nausea multiple times enough from the anxiety and the trigger responses from that, from that, from that experience. And you knew, and you knew the whole time. Don't you dare try to apologize for your communication. Why don't you apologize for taking advantage of my vulnerability to get in my pants? You knew I never would have ever slept with you without a condom had I known what was going on. I found out on TikTok. I found out on TikTok. Lance. In an now deleted video of Chelsea, which was directed to Lance, they talk about the sacrifices it is that they made to go and see him. They speak about heartbreak and broken trust and that they were hoping that he would see how much love they had in their heart for him. I don't know, that's just giving me like, I'm trying to persuade you vibes. Like, you don't need to be poly, like, all you need is me. Which is also like kind of not respecting somebody else's choice to non-monogamy, but I digress. Chelsea also mentions how they don't want to chase Lance for his affection and to compete with 3 million people who, unquote, don't know you like I do, which in turn made Chelsea feel as if they weren't being prioritized. It's really hard when we build up and build up and, and, and it was very mutual. It was very mutual, and I still think it's mutual. It's really hard when we build up and build up, and there's a precedent set of, a, of, of so much flirtation and sexy stuff. Um, and I made a big sacrifice. I made a big sacrifice to buy a ticket to come see you because I really, really, really trusted you. I really, really believed, and I hope, I somehow still believe, that it was really special. That this guy was different. That he was going to see how much care I have in me. And how much love I have in my heart, and he was going to see it. And finally, he was somebody was going to give it back to me. Because, Lance, I don't want to be chasing your attention when you give it to three million people all the time. 
3 million people who didn't know who you were six months ago. I knew. I knew and I believed in you. I saw your potential and I still see it. When you didn't see it. I didn't really still believe in it. And I would like to feel like the same priority to somebody else. Because I feel like a second thought. I feel like a second thought. That's what I feel like. Because you say you have a detached attachment style. Then what are you doing to fix that? What are you doing to work past that? In another video, Chelsea speaks about the instance where they saw the other woman on Lance's TikTok, which was the exact same day that Chelsea was last with Lance as they were returning home. They go on to say that it was too late for them to take a plan B and that they now had to worry about an STD. My problem with the STD claim is, however, that regardless, this was reckless behavior on Chelsea's part. Regardless of whether Lance was having multiple relations with multiple partners, Chelsea essentially was raw dogging this guy without knowing his history or even a fresh STD test. The worry about STDs really should have started the moment that Chelsea decides to raw dog this guy. And personally speaking, this is just my humble opinion, Chelsea at some point needs to take responsibility for their own health because their own exposure to STDs was a lapse in their judgment, regardless of whether Lance was cheating or not. Several days after I left Lance's house in Denver, I saw this TikTok. The time and date stamp is the exact day I left his house. But by then, it was too late to take Plan B, and I now had to worry about an STD. He swore to me that there was absolutely no one else, and I decided to keep it private for reasons like this. I confided in a couple other creators the night it happened. These are from the night before the tweet. And this is what I tweeted directly before the tweet that is currently circulating, which is a joke I made to myself under the understanding I now had to get tested for an STD. I called someone who knew Lance personally, and it was only then that they revealed to me that he was likely in a committed serious relationship the entire time we were an item. I had opened up my body in a way that I had vividly described to him was very difficult for me. And out of anger, I posted an Instagram story. When Lance saw the Instagram story, he sent me these messages and proceeded to call me uh, repeatedly until I answered. We were on the phone till 4 a.m and he was telling me those things that he wanted to unalive himself till 4 a.m. He was driving into the mountains. But by that time, it was too late. The Instagram story had already been seen by thousands of people on Instagram and Facebook, which is why I started my first video with this. But I do not wish harm or vengeance on this person. I did make a post in anger earlier today and it was wrong and I shouldn't have and I want to clear this air operating under the assumption that there was no other people, I made that post. But since I've come out, there are now five of us who are all visibly identical, who had been manipulated into sharing our deepest fears and traumas and buying tickets to go see Lance Sosi in Denver in a romantic relationship. And that is why he screamed bloody murder on the phone to me, because he has a pattern of abuse that he didn't want me to know about and he didn't want anyone else to know about. I wanted a relationship and babies and i vividly described that to lance after losing my baby a year ago there is no question of my intentions with lance Sosi. chelsea states that lance had swore to them that there was nobody else now that's where lance effed up because that was a complete and total blatant lie and at that point he understood clearly that there was value to chelsea at least in monogamy Otherwise, Lance wouldn't have tried to actively hide it. Chelsea also goes on to state that they had spoken to a personal friend of Lance's who said that he was likely in a committed relationship the entire time. Now, I believe this could be in reference to Lance's current wife, but put a pin in this because we will come back to that later. Because as I said, as this story continues to unfold, there are various different twists and turns.
Amanda Marie, Banana Marie, is another person who has absolutely identical claims against Lance. She also flew out to go and see him, had unprotected relations, and also states that he denied her consent by not stating that he was sleeping with multiple other people. Like, I am dead ash trying to figure out why women in the 21st century are literally raw dogging individuals in a completely different state and taking their word for their health with all the stds it is that we know about why are people so comfortable just relationing around with somebody that they barely know amanda also stated that she had confronted lance about the video with the other woman and states that she got into an extremely heated conversation with him after amanda exposed how she felt about this now many people on social media were shocked to see the similarities between chelsea's and amanda's stories not just the stories but the similarities Similarities in their physical appearance. Lance certainly has a type. If you saw Chelsea's video about Lance, you know exactly what happened to me because our stories are identical. Um, up to exactly the same situation of me flying out there and having unprotected sex with him after he told me he hadn't had sex with anybody else and denied me informed consent. So I never planned to make a video about this or a video like this. Um, this is not what I want to use my platform for. But after finding out so much more information about just how bad this whole thing was, it needs to be said because while this is not, this has nothing to do with the groups that Lance is a part of and the work he does on this app and in his communities. This is about a man who lied and manipulated multiple women. And that's really bad. That is not, that is not okay. And so up until even two days ago, when I was on the phone with him, screaming at him for lying to me because I saw the video he posted with the other girl and was like, we've been dating. Why are you posting a video with another girl? Why didn't you tell me? Chelsea had the exact same experience that I did. It seems as if Chelsea and Amanda had spoken together about their time with Lance in private because Amanda drew up like a small timeline of events and basically showed how Lance works his time out between each of the women. It's giving very much Tinder swindler vibes. Amanda states that in January, Lance had actually canceled a visit from Chelsea, but had Amanda fly out to come and see him instead. Then on Valentine's Day, he bought her some really expensive earrings. Meanwhile, in Alaska, Chelsea was buying tickets to go and see Lance. She calls into question all of the other times that Lance had told her that he was busy and he was actually going to see another woman or maybe even Chelsea. She states that she donated to his campaign for him to go and get his car fixed. She sent him stuff for his dogs and then points out that it was actually getting the same stuff from Chelsea. In January, he canceled a trip to go visit her but had me fly out there to see him. And on Valentine's Day, he sent me beautiful, expensive earrings and she was flying, she was buying tickets to go fly and see him. This man has been using us and preying on the fact that we are both very kind, very empathetic women. And while I know he suffers from depression and anxiety, using those to get us to feel sympathetic towards him and forgive him for shitty fucking behavior. The amount of hours I've spent on the phone with him and on FaceTime with him, trying to help and support him, does not negate the amount of hours I spent waiting for a reply and he told me I was sleeping, I was at the gym, I was doing homework. How about last week when Chelsea was out there visiting you and you weren't replying to me and you told me two days ago that you were just trying to figure out a way to tell me that you were seeing this other girl. The amount of lies is asinine. And I realize this is a long video, but this is only the surface of what 
I have done and dealt with for months to the point where I was sending, I donated to his campaign to get his car fixed. I sent him stuff for his dog. Like I have spent money and time and energy on him and he was taking that from her as well. He was getting the exact same thing from Chelsea as well. And this cannot go unaccounted for. When Amanda and Lance had relations, Amanda actually had to go to hospital for a ruptured ovarian cyst. Lance then allegedly went on to brag to Chelsea that some girl he slept with, he was so good that he ruptured an ovarian cyst. Like weird flex, but okay. And she also accuses Lance of using his depression and anxiety as a way to manipulate and gaslight the women. It feels to me at least that the video that Amanda made actually came from a place of jealousy as she mentions that she did not expect an apology in the same manner of which Chelsea had received such an apology from Lance but then realized that the situation must have been bad enough and there must be multiple women which caused him to make such a public apology Amanda also states that she took multiple pregnancy tests because she wasn't sure whether she was pregnant and that she also went to go and get tested for STDs, finally. The thing is, I know I won't be getting a gentle, glow, emotionless apology video. I know that for a fact. So then when I woke up this morning and saw his video first apologizing to her, I, my heart sank, absolutely sank. Because that's when I knew this wasn't just me and the girl that he posted the video with the other day, but that there was somebody else and it was bad enough that he made a public apology. And I know I won't be getting that same public apology. Informed consent does matter. And what makes that whole situation even worse is the fact that when him and I had I almost had to go to the ER because I had a ruptured ovarian cyst, which is what it is. That happens. I realized that. But apparently, he went and told her that, that some girl he slept with, it was so good with her that he ruptured an ovarian cyst. He bragged about me to her weeks after it happening, playing it off like it had happened a while ago. As I'm literally waiting for my period and take, took multiple pregnancy tests because I didn't know, because I was uncertain. I went and got tested because I didn't know. And he bragged about it. Now, somebody with some sense actually commented under one of Amanda's videos the following. I'm amazed that both women didn't protect themselves from pregnancies and STIs. Amanda responded to them by questioning if Amanda and Chelsea should be blamed for the lies it is that Lance told them. I wasn't going to make another video, but don't you dare blame Chelsea or I for the lies he told us. I am on birth control. Birth control is not 100% effective. So that's still always going to be a concern whether you've been with a partner once or a million times. Second, if I ask my partner, have you been recently tested or have you had a partner since you were last tested and they lie to me about that, that's not my fault. I've done my due diligence of asking. If they lie, and don't tell me the truth about who their partners have been or when they were last tested. And then I sleep with them because I make the choice to have unprotected sex because I'm on birth control and I'm trusting my partner to disclose their history with me. That is denying me informed consent. So don't blame me. Don't blame Chelsea for trusting somebody who we thought we could trust. That's up and don't do that to other women but she also goes on to state that she is on birth control and that she did do her due diligence of asking lance if he had been having relations with multiple people or if he had been tested and he lied to her therefore in her opinion denying her of informed consent my question is once again why did you take somebody else's word for their sexual health status why did you not require a health screening before raw dogging each other i mean tmi of course but me and my husband never had unprotected relations until he had a health screening and so did i because that's what normal sane human beings do that's what i would consider due diligence and any 
mental health consultant would tell you the exact same. But then, just as you thought that the story couldn't have got any more wilder, the third woman, the woman from the video, finally spoke out. So I know what you guys are thinking. So a third woman has come forward. Let me guess, the same story? No, actually. Entirely different. Jalita Marie is another person who uploaded a video on TikTok speaking of her experiences with Lance. She states again that she has been friends with Lance for over a year and that their relationship evolved at the end of summer where both parties spoke about the parameters of their relationship becoming more romantic. This, according to her, was discussed in detail. But both of them went on and decided that neither of them were ready to really truly be exclusive. She states that there were times where Lance was less than kind to her and that she has called him an asshole on multiple occasions. But usually without asking, he would apologize and try his best to navigate how to do better. So, modern warrior. Um, I thought long and hard about whether or not I wanted to even come forward and talk about my experiences um, with him as another woman that he was more than friends with and i think i finally decided that yes i i feel comfortable sharing um what i'm sharing in this video and as of this point nothing more while i continue to process my emotions quick disclaimer my story is not meant to minimize or diminish anyone else's story um this is just what happened between me and him and my personal experiences with him Number one, we've been friends for over a year now, um, and then it evolved towards the end of the summer, and I can pinpoint exactly when it evolved because we had detailed conversations about the exact parameters of what we were doing and what we both consented to with regard to our friendship evolving into something more. Number two, one of those parameters involved us specifically discussing and agreeing that neither of us were ready to be exclusive. Number three, um, there were times where he was less than kind. Um, quite frankly, I called him an asshole once or twice. Um, but what I appreciated is without me having to ask for it, he would apologize and then outline and say what exactly he thought he did wrong and how he could do better. I just want to reiterate that this is just my experience with Modern Warrior. It is not meant to minimize or diminish anyone else's experience with him. And while my heart goes out to the other women who have come forward and said that they were negatively impacted by his behavior, I quite frankly want to just put this behind me um, and move forward with my life. The fact was that Julita was the woman who had caused such a rift between the other two individuals. And because of that, she was pressured to come forward, but honestly, had nothing truly negative to say about Lance. And pointed out that, you know, even though there were moments in their relationship that was quite rocky, he always showed self-awareness and tried to do better. But at this point, she would just like the whole situation to be behind her. Now, one of the things that many people picked up is that Julita does not look like a carbon copy of the other two individuals. Firstly, she's a woman of color. That became a big conversation on TikTok because many people felt as if Lance, the hey colonizer guy, hated white people so much that he couldn't respect them in the same way that he could a person of color. In the article written by The Daily Dot, an ex-friend of Lance, said the following. Chelsea told her that Lance likes to sleep with white women and then marry them, but will not have mixed children because he didn't approve of mixed race native children. Many people are inclined to believe that Lance's respect for white women is limited in comparison to women of color. Even Lance's current love interest is a person of color, who again reports to be treated with respect by Lance. But not all people of color have the shared experience of being treated with respect by Lance. Incoming, Aunt Karen.
Okay, so if you don't know who Aunt Karen is, Aunt Karen is a TikToker with about 1.6 million followers. And she basically does the same thing as Lance, which is that call out content creator, social justice warrior for various different minorities and marginalized groups. Aunt Karen has been described by many content creators on TikTok as working for the department of other people's business. You down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. When this whole drama popped off, Aunt Karen made a video in solidarity with Chelsea where there is an audio clip used and a picture of Lance behind them with an audio that plays the next time you call me a offender make sure you put registered in front of it defender make sure you put registered in front of it you whack mother this was taken so badly by the tiktok community as what lance actually stood accused of was lying to people in order to get people to have relations with him not at all that he was an so or that he sa'd anybody or even just being predatory in any way besides possibly preying on the emotions of vulnerable individuals and this is the problem with the lines blurred by chelsea and Amanda stating that they were not given informed consent because what this does is essentially likens it to SA because of course if you can't consent it's either our word or SA. Lance's response to Aunt Karen's video was basically to say that this was misinformation taken out of context and completely and totally ridiculous. Yeah and the next time you call me a sex offender make sure you put registered in front of it. You see what we're not going to do is run around spreading misinformation. The conversation that you're taking way out of context to justify this post is ridiculous. Aunt Karen then came out with a video basically showing her DMs with Lance to state that Lance had exhibited behavior like this in the past and she tried to warn him then. In the DMs between Lance and Aunt Karen, Lance states that I didn't do nothing to that woman. However, it's unclear if he was speaking about Redacted or Chelsea. See, what y'all don't know is that I checked him on this behavior before when another content creator reached out and basically threw this at me as if I somehow hold all the answers to Lance, I was pissed. And I went to Lance and said this. This was a response to another content creator, Small, who said that he basically attempted to do the same thing and that they had some heated text messages and tried to get her to go out to Denver. And when I confronted him, he told me he didn't want to deal with the drama. He did. He left me on red. So when I told him to address these issues, he didn't. So now he has to publicly address them. Aunt Karen then later recanted their support of Chelsea, basically stating that they were manipulated and used Aunt Karen in order to make their voice louder. Aunt Karen states that at the end of the day, Chelsea just wants to sit there and watch POC individuals take the fall. Which is so funny to me because absolutely nobody on this planet told Aunt Karen to get involved and to call somebody a offender. To her platform of 1.6 million users. Start this video off with acknowledging that Chelsea manipulated me. Um, she knew the stories of others and she knew that utilizing them and leveraging them and then manipulating me would make her louder. Chelsea knew that at the end, she was going to fall back on herself and let me or any person of color take the fall. The thing is that there are people who are genuinely hurt by the actions of another person. Genuinely hurt. And Chelsea leveraged their hurt to push her own hurt higher. I know that I should have never gotten involved. And I also know that so many people tell me that all the time and that I have gotten justice for people where they couldn't get justice before. I'm not making excuses. I'm just acknowledging that I was wrong and that I definitely wish I never got my foot into the door of this mess. 
I apologize to my followers, my supporters. But I won't let Chelsea shift this blame and this issue onto me. Chelsea allowed the story to be told and allowed the issues to continuously go on. I'm not going to allow her to continuously manipulate people of color, and I'm not going to allow her to try to paint me as the entire reason that this was going on. Chelsea knows what she's done, and she knows that everyone else who has a story, she tried to force them to tell it, and she tried to force them to tell it in a different light to fit her own agenda as well. The biggest apology that I owe it to someone who is off this app right now, and he and I need to have a conversation. But I am out of the narrative that Chelsea wants to paint. I am out of that. I'm not going to allow my platform to be utilized and be painted in a different light. I'm going to continuously get justice for those that need it. And I know that I have done that. But I also need a break. And I'm going to take one. So thank you guys. On Karen finally then comes to their senses and states that she should have never got involved. Hallelujah. And states that she has been told this frequently. You have. But somehow that it's outweighed by the amount of justice it is that she's been able to get for other people. She then goes on to apologize to her supporters and followers, but reiterates that she doesn't want the blame shifted onto her because she accuses Chelsea of trying to kind of sway the public narrative using bigger content creators by telling them stories about Lance to suit their own agenda. My thoughts on this genuinely are is that Aunt Karen is such a social climber and that she will always try her best to be on the right side of public opinion even if it's to the detriment of her relationships and friendships and any way that aunt karen can turn a narrative and center it around herself she'll do that but i'm biased because i don't like that woman like i don't i don't like her okay Before eventually leaving the platform, Amanda Marie came out with a video where she stated that she was used as a pawn by a larger content creator so that they could cover up and not acknowledge their shitty behavior. She goes on to say that Chelsea is using this moment to, and quote, defame an indigenous man and that she's just as much of a victim as Chelsea is, but she's not using that to post on Instagram about how they have feelings of unaliving themselves or that they had to go to the hospital because they are potentially pregnant with Lance's baby. And then I'm deleting TikTok and I'm taking a long break from this app because I'm tired of being used as a pawn by people with larger follower counts than me, banking on my kindness to cover up and not acknowledge their shitty fucking behavior. Chelsea is absolutely using this moment to defame an indigenous man. These are her white woman tears. I denied that yesterday thinking that I was protecting somebody who's a victim. She's as much as a, as a victim as I am and you don't see me posting on Instagram that I need to go to the hospital, that I'm potentially pregnant with this man's baby, that I'm having thoughts about unaliving myself. All of this is for attention. Whether those things are true, she is posting about them to get your support, to get your sympathy, and to get followers. This is happening because she wants this attention. As soon as she found out that I could verify her experience with Lance, she has been calling me nonstop, yelling at me, pressuring me, telling me what to say, telling me what to do, telling me what to post, telling me what not to post, trying to control me and how I tell the truth about my experience with Lance. She is doing that intentionally. This is exactly what she wants. And I am not the only one who knows that. I had these concerns today and was feeling guilty and I called to Versha to say, hey, I don't know what to do about this. And she has had the exact same concerns as I have had. She has been noticing the exact same things and has been dealing with the exact same behavior. And she's not the only other creator. The other creators just don't want to be known. Chelsea asked to Versha to refer to her as the pregnant woman into Versha's videos. Because all this started to happen, I went, you know what? There's somebody else who knows Chelsea. I asked Lance. 
I just said, what was your experience like with Chelsea before giving anything away about what I was dealing with? And he said the exact same thing. And she, she honestly has verified all of it. Chelsea has verified all of it. She also said that she would call him nonstop over and over, sobbing, crying, texting him constantly, always talking about un unliving herself, her mental health, everything. He said the same thing. Other creators have said the same thing. So for the past three days, not only have I been dealing with my own pain and own sadness dealing with this whole situation, I'm dealing with this woman screaming at me. I woke up to, at 7 a.m. today, her calling me and yelling at me. So I'm done. The truth is what needed to be out there. I needed to tell my story so that Lance didn't use his platform any longer to take advantage of women. That's what needed to be said. That is the truth that needed to be talked about, not everything else. So I'm done. I'm done and you guys all get to know what's going on and I'm leaving this like I'm not going to deal with this anymore because I can't tolerate being treated like this being spoken to like this and being taken advantage of like I just don't know how besides Chelsea's clear decline in mental health how Amanda is any better they are both trying to defame and quote an indigenous man the definition of the fame is to damage the good reputation of someone slander or liable and saying that you you did not have the ability to consent to relations that you had with an individual depending on the circumstance could be considered as defamation and slander and liable but i digress as soon as amanda found out that she had had the same experience with lance allegedly chelsea had been calling her non-stop screaming and yelling at her pressuring her and telling her what to say and post she mentioned speaking to some other content creators who would experience the same situation that Amanda was experiencing, one of them named Traversia, where they claimed that Chelsea had actually suggested that they refer to them as that pregnant woman in her videos. Amanda actually got in contact with Lance and spoke about Chelsea's erratic behavior. And he also confirmed to her that Chelsea would call him non-stop being verbally aggressive, sobbing and texting him frequently, speaking of unaliving themselves. But I will say it is important to note that Amanda and Lance did begin speaking despite Amanda actually coming out with allegations against Lance. That Lance actually did end up speaking to Amanda after the fact. I feel like that's important to note. Let's put a pin in it because we're what? Coming back to it later. In Chelsea's original video, they speak about having an ache in their womb let's and not womb lands contrary to popular belief and they had completely misrepresented their situation as being somebody who'd lost their child due to natural causes it turns out that chelsea had actually had an abortion and not a miscarriage and used loaded language that would lead the audience to believe otherwise essentially they manipulated their audience I lost my child I threw up from the pain of the contractions and fell asleep in a puddle of sweat. It was excruciating. This was the moment I knew that you were manipulating us. As someone who was told that they would be infertile, I know what a miscarriage feels like. I also know that recently I had a miracle pregnancy that I chose to terminate. I prioritized my mental health and my own physical well-being over the pregnancy. I made this tough choice and I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah, it's sad, but I made that choice. So four months ago, I was in a fetal position, sleeping on the floor in excruciating pain as I ended it. You chose your words carefully. You had us thinking that you had this tragic miscarriage happen that you lost this wanted child and you were going through this trauma and you were taken advantage of. I'm not trying to say that your trauma isn't real, that I'm not trying to minimize your pain, but you purposely put that in our heads in order to feel the most sympathy for your side. You claimed you buried a child. I think you are very publicly going through a mental health crisis right now, and I do believe that you need to get help for that. But then you are also accusing Lance of manipulating tactics, like threatening to unalive himself, while you yourself are threatening to unalive yourself and 
keeps talking about going to the hospital for IV drips and stuff like that to manipulate us as your followers, as your viewers. You are using us to lift yourself up, but that is unfair to us who are essay survivors, who have gone through a uh, terminating pregnancy. You have made me lose sleep over this because I have doubted my my own feminism. I have doubted my own world views because of believing all women. And I wanted to support you. I wanted to believe you. I will never question or try to dismiss someone's reason for terminating a pregnancy. But you are the one who brought that into this conversation and in a misleading way that you knew was misleading. Cheating narcissists should be held publicly accountable. But you have used us because you did not get the response that you wanted. I'm sorry you are hurting, but please find help. Love yourself. The misrepresentation and verbiage that was used was so convincing that even in print and publication, they referred to Chelsea as having a miscarriage. Here's an example of this on one of the many websites that state the same. But surprisingly enough, this isn't the only situation like this that has arrived for Chelsea. According to an ex-comedy colleague of Chelsea's, allegedly Chelsea has accused other people of essay. Now, I can't validify anything that this comic is saying, but I do think it's very interesting that they decided to come out with these allegations towards Chelsea at this particular time when another man was being condemned for similar practices. Some things people don't know about Chelsea Hart. <laughs> I'm sure many of you are aware of the recent drama between Chelsea Hart and Modern Warrior, aka Lance Sosi. I'm not here to offer any commentary on that specific issue. For context, Chelsea isn't somebody that I've had the displeasure of meeting personally. But as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm from London, innit? And her and I both spent some time on the London comedy circuit. One thing Chelsea didn't take into account when she decided to take aim at some of my content at the start of the year was we both know some of the same people. Self-described comedian Chelsea Hart, while living in London, actually made more of a name for herself accusing her fellow comics of sexual harassment rather than actually being funny. On odd occasion, when her jokes were failing, she'd decide to heckle other comedians as well as dancing on stage during her act. While in London, she ended up sleeping with another comic. It has been alleged that they were dating, but she turned nasty when he made it clear that he wasn't interested in anything serious. And at one point, said comic took a selfie with Chelsea sleeping in his bed in the background while her shoulders were on display. At the time, again, allegedly, Chelsea didn't have a problem with this. But after their romance ended and the comic in question moved on and found somebody else, Chelsea got a little bit jealous. She decided to jump on yet another social movement by creating her own Me Too moment and accused the guy of harassment. Conveniently, during the run-up to the Edinburgh Comedy Festival, the guy had loads of gigs cancelled and he lost loads of money due to lost venues and accommodation. In Britain, we have a comedy blog-based website called Chortle. It's like the industry go-to guide, if you will. Now, if someone wants to call themselves a comedian, because the work that they create ultimately has that sort of tinge about it, then fair enough. But Chelsea often makes herself out to be somewhat of an established comedian. Yet, if you search for Chelsea's name on the Chortle website, nothing comes up. She doesn't have any sort of profile, not even a basic thing like name, date of birth, and a little bio. But what you will find is an article written by Chelsea in June 2020, all about sexual harassment, as well as detailing the events that I'm talking about. The guy may have done something boastful, idiotic perhaps. And again, apparently they were dating. But whether or not that's a reason enough to completely obliterate someone's professional journey, I'll let you be the judge of that for yourselves. The only other thing you'll find out about Chelsea is a load of those sort of model type photographs that people pay to have taken of themselves. Not that I'm allowed to show you on this platform, but she's not wearing any pants in that photograph. And after all of that hullabaloo, Chelsea left London to live in Manchester for about a year while repositioning herself as some sort of woke TikTok icon before leaving the country entirely. Seeing a pattern emerge? Chelsea, Miss Superqueer, willingly involves herself sexually with men, then publicly accuses them of sexual harassment when things don't go the way that she had thought they would. As well as thinking that berating Eastern Europeans in the middle of a war for their supposed white privilege is some sort of noble thing to do. But again, I'm not about to say what did and didn't happen to an individual. That's not my place. Okay, and then moving on to Lance. Lance is married. For a while, it was speculated that he was in a marriage, but we did manage, huh, through the good grace of the Lord, to find a marriage license and certificate. The person, although a public figure and a politician, lives a very reserved and quiet life. 
So for that reason, throughout all of this, I will hide our identity. But I was also able to use this information to find out if they had any shared assets. Because one of the things that was swirling around on TikTok is that he married somebody, you know, for financial reasons or that somebody could get into the country or whatever. This is definitely not the case because if you have shared assets, chances are that this was not supposed to be like a, you know, an arrangement. This was something that could be permanent so for instance they first bought a home together with each other in 2020 in fact i saw them both him and his current wife leave reviews on a review style kind of trust pilot style website for their mortgage broker so that kind of corroborates the fact that they do have shared assets in this marriage now there isn't any divorce certifications at all they could possibly be separated we don't know the nature of their relationship but i think it's important to note because that was a huge issue for a lot of people in this whole discussion the other thing that we found out is that lance may have had a vasectomy there were two videos it is that lance posted to the internet that kind of somewhat give validity to that however we cannot say for certain or verbatim that he definitely has had a vasectomy start a fight in one sentence or less if you don't like abortions get a vasectomy but full bellies and clear skies it's a paradise half the planet a small price to pay for salvation but if he has had a vasectomy i really do question because there's a very 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 small chance that chelsea would have been able to have become pregnant from somebody who has had a vasectomy i know there are some that can slip through and it's not impossible but the chances are pretty slim but again with these two videos i can't say that they are definitive proof but they are definitely food for thought Well, what happened? And how did it end? Did it even end? Well, you know, kind of. Mm. No, no. No, it's not ended. So Chelsea, they posted to their IG that they were put into a psych ward for the last 10 days because they attempted to unalive themselves. After somebody on the internet leaked that they had had an abortion a year and a half ago. They had just started talking about it, the abortion that is, and had endured three days of artificial contractions or labor which caused them to develop anxiety over the past two years after 10 days in hospital chelsea did eventually post to the friends only section of their tiktok where they basically said that they weren't going to return hi y'all i'm out of the hospital um i just got out um i i'm not gonna be uh coming back to this app anytime soon i'm quite over it uh yeah uh this app made a meme out of me crying over my abortion and therefore i'm just my energy's elsewhere but yeah uh i'm just not gonna be coming back if any of you whichever ones of you are left you're welcome to follow me on instagram but i'm personally not going to be posting on this app anymore i'm leaving it like a time capsule and turning off all my comments so that's what's gonna happen uh, I appreciate I appreciate anyone who's here. Um, yeah, um, I've been in the hospital for ten days because of the bullying that I experienced on this app. It's not accountability; it's bullying someone within an inch of their lives. It's not accountability, and I I can't take this joke anymore. Um, yeah, I'm just no. Uh, I almost died because of this app, so I'm not coming back. But if any of you are still here, feel free to follow me on Instagram and chat there. They feel as if they have been bullied off the app and they were upset that so many people had made a meme out of womb lands and out of their abortion. However, I'd like to add that Chelsea in their history on TikTok had also made jokes about abortion. So abortion is funny, but only when it's not you. Do you see? Do you see the hypocrisy here? Oh my god! Do you know this song too? Sing it with me. <laughs> 900,000 babies murdered every year. 
2,362 a day 900,000 babies are murdered every year That's more than car accidents and cancer all combined In toilets, in bathrooms, with a tiny pill in a doctor's office She saw the sonogram, she said I'm not a mother, not baby, she yeeted A day, and I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I literally cannot. Okay, so Amanda actually ended up giving Lance an ultimatum because I guess he stopped replying to her messages. I would rather risk losing my entire platform to tell the truth exactly as I know it to be than to sit back and watch a misogynistic man drag me through the mud and refuse to take any responsibility for this mess that he's made. As a strong woman who is raised by a strong woman, who is surrounded by strong women, and who has a platform based in empowering women, I cannot sit here and watch this man pretend to be a victim as he continues to lie and manipulate. And if I stay quiet, then all of this was for nothing. All of the pain that was caused was for nothing. I have been quiet for nearly two weeks now to protect him, but if he's going to resort to threatening me to keep me quiet, then I am no longer afraid of him. And if you're Lance's lawyer, are you okay with him threatening me twice? If you know me, then you know that I'm a fairly reserved person. I always try to speak with intention. I'm careful. I care about the truth. And I care about respecting others above all else. So to be threatened by the person who has been lying to me for months is not, not something that I can ignore any longer. This all started with Lance and it ends with Lance. I did something I don't normally do and I typed out what it is that I wanted to say. I did this because what I have to say is important and I don't want to mince words or forget anything. I acknowledge and accept that I made many mistakes with how this all played out. For the first one being supporting Chelsea at the beginning, though I don't regret why I supported her. I didn't know her before all of this started, so I didn't know the type of person she was or what she was trying to do. That's why on the day that I was finally able to get some perspective, I made the video revoking my support of her. But being in the middle of everything, including my own heartbreak, meant I wasn't able to see who she really was, was at first, like many BIPOC creators were able to. He's been lying to and manipulating everyone for months. Me, Chelsea, and Karen, and all of his followers. This is why you haven't seen a word of accountability come from his mouth, because this deception is bigger than just Chelsea and I. People have been saying we want Lance's side as a way of showing support for him over the past few days, but I've been saying that since the beginning. And the reason you aren't getting Lance's side is because it sucks. He knew the type of person Chelsea was and refused to say anything. She caught him cheating on her and blew up on him the night before this all came out and he made the decision not to ask for help. Instead, he posted a pitiful apology video, quoting me no less, and I have to find out he was cheating on me through TikTok. That made it clear to me that he did not care about me, does not respect women, and was only interested in protecting himself. He's made it even more clear in his two weeks of silence while he lets women act as a shield for him so he doesn't have to do anything. Because he knew he could have come to me and said, Amanda, I fucked up, and no matter how mad I was at him, I would have helped him. He knows that. There is not a bad thing that man can say about me because I was a great friend to him, and he knows that too. Instead, he wanted to sit back and let everything play out without ever holding himself accountable. This all started because he lied to so many people for the sake of protecting his platform. Everything he has done has been to protect his platform and his image. That is why he is more interested in apologizing to his followers when he messes up and not to the individuals he hurt. He has never apologized to any of us for the lies he told that began unraveling months ago. And he knew that letting women fight this out meant he was going to get off the hook relatively clean. And it worked. So you want to know Lance's side? I'll tell you his side. He has flirted with, sent nudes to, requested nudes from, and tried to have more women than just Chelsea and I fly out there to visit him. He used his platform as a way to protect himself and thought it would prevent him from getting caught. He knew the type of person Chelsea was and still had her come visit him, even though they both made it sound like she wanted it more than he did. She was there the day before he posted a TikTok with another creator, the video that both Chelsea and I saw and found out he was dating somebody else. On March 3rd, in the beginning of all this, we, him and I were on the phone and he referred to me as his partner and he acknowledged what a true friend I was for still trying to protect him despite everything that has happened. 
He told me that what we had was different and he never saw Chelsea as anything more than a friend and that what they had was not like what we had. The romantic part of our relationship was on and off at that point because he wanted to date a woman of color because they could better relate to him and understand race in a way that a white woman could not. He's not wrong, but the timing seemed a little suspicious. It was very convenient that the video he had posted that weekend was with a woman of color creator on TikTok who is now posting videos in support of him while also saying things like, It's like, her girlfriend, I'm like, yeah. keep your heads on girlfriends, let's just be straight. On her lives, even though he continues to lie to her to protect his own ass, especially since he destroyed his relationship with Aunt Karen, who refused to continue to support him after spending months defending him against lies he told everyone. Lance's side includes having women writing his apology videos and us explaining to him why what he has said and done is problematic. While he can save face publicly, we are doing the emotional labor for him, and yet he never seems to learn from his mistakes. He continues to post videos out of anger because he needs to get the last word in and be right, even at the expense of reason. Lance's side is being married to a white woman, lying about it, and having his friends defend his lies because he refused to even tell the woman he was in a relationship the truth. The reason you will never hear Lance aside and the reason he has tried to threaten me into silence is because he knows there's nothing he can say that I can't contest, that I don't have rece receipts to disprove. So you should know that anything else he posts about this situation further implicates himself as a misogynist and a hypocrite. He chose to lie to people he knew cared about him as a way to further himself on a platform he used to lie and manipulate on. He told me more than once that he was going to leave TikTok for good and give his account over to an indigenous woman, and he has been saying that for months, and yet he continues to make his own content. I stand by everything I have said, and I know I have dozens of women who will defend me if necessary. I have been silent out of fear of what he was going to do, but I cannot allow this man to continue to manipulate me in order to protect himself. I messaged him today asking if we could talk, but he read it and didn't respond. Lance, if you'd like to talk now, I'm happy to go live with you. Otherwise, this is done. I'm just confused as to why Amanda feels the need to go live and talk about this. But it doesn't look as if this is going to happen anyway because Amanda's TikTok account got banned for breaking community guidelines, of which we do not know. But she did actually eventually give one final apology before their account was terminated. But at that point, everyone was pretty much exhausted and literally nothing felt authentic. This is going to be the last video that I post before signing off for a while, but I owe a lot of people a genuine apology. My actions hurt individuals and communities, and so from the bottom of my heart, I am so, so sorry. And I realize that this apology cannot fix the damage that has been done or the pain that was caused, but it is necessary because so many people were affected when I acted out of my own pain without thinking. And it took me a little while to make this video because I didn't want my apology to come from a place of pain as well. I have been listening, watching, reading, and talking to friends and other creators who are part of the BIPOC community to understand the actual consequences that my actions had. People were threatened, were the targets of racist and hateful comments and videos, were banned from this app, and more. The attention that my videos drew overshadowed Native women trying to draw attention to their experience as essay survivors. The harm that I caused both directly and through my proximity to others was inexcusable. I reached out to people directly over the past two weeks offering my own private apologies, including the person you have all asked about. Yes, I have apologized to her as well. I obviously still have a lot of learning left to do and that is my own responsibility. So in my time away from this app, I plan on continuing to listen, watch, learn, and educate myself on how my own white feminism lacks intersectionality and led to what happened starting a few weeks ago. Thank you to those who have held me accountable and offered your constructive criticism. And thank you to those who have worked tirelessly to educate me and others on the nuances of race and misogyny. Again, I am so sorry to everyone I hurt through my actions. I do not expect or ask for forgiveness, but this is also not the place for my white followers to accept this apology because this apology is not for you. Thank you. Aunt Karen is still just centering everything around herself. She had a recent live stream where she essentially said that she was sick of being the martyr and that Lance was only using his current POC love interest as a shield and a way to do his dirty work. If you guys look at all the people that have fallen on the sword of this Chelsea and Lance issue, not one of them have been men. Not one of them that have stood up and said anything about this has been men. And I believe that Lance is just sitting back watching and allowing all of these women 
in Native women who have lost their accounts, who he said nothing in support of, uh, people who are unfollowing me because he wants to make it seem like I stabbed him in the back when in actuality, Lance has been stabbing me in the back for months. But other than that, all she's done is corroborated the fact that, you know, Amanda has receipts. And I guess she's seen them. Who knows? And Lance, well, he pretty much remained silent, but did eventually come back to TikTok where he made a post about being stabbed in the back. This post was presumably directed towards Aunt Karen. But besides that, he's pretty much kept to himself and made a couple of TikToks with his more recent POC love interest. So to conclude, this clusterfuck of a situation should not have been brought to the internet. I have no idea why we know all of this. The only semi-positive thing that has come out of this situation is the necessary conversation surrounding consent, informed consent, and non-monogamy. I don't feel as if there is a clear and distinct line of what the parameters of informed consent is, and whether individuals should truly just show discernment when engaging in activities with others. And again, I am truly not in support of Lance. In fact, I'm not in support of anyone in this entire situation. But it needs to be said that whilst what Lance did was unethical, I don't believe we can truly say it was any more than that. Anyone old enough to get involved in relations should know that there are people out there who will be willing to lie to you to get what they want. Consent differs from informed consent. Consent is the act of asking for approval to proceed with a specific procedure. Conversely, informed consent is a process in which all of the relative information is relayed and understood by the receiver and they decide independently. Again, this is only to the act itself and not the emotional needs of the individuals participating. In the same way that you can't sue every ex that f you over for emotional damage. Although we'd all like to. Legally, the position is in most countries that if you consent to somebody having relations with you, with a couple of minor exceptions, it doesn't matter whether they lied to you in order to get you to do that. You still know that they want to do it and you accepted and said yes. The consent is to the act itself and informed is whether you have the capacity to consent such as inebriation or any kind of mental illness that would prohibit you from making an informed decision or even just simply being a minor and not having the mental capacity to deal with what it is that somebody is asking of you. Basically anything that could impact your decision making or impact your ability to understand. But I also understand that if somebody tells you that they want a relationship with you and that they have no intentions of seeing any other people at the same time, that this could feel fraudulent to you. But how do you prove that they didn't want a relationship? with you or that they weren't honest with their intentions of not dating other people at the time that they requested relations from you when they said they did consent works both ways and can be revoked at any time so you could meet somebody who promises you the world and they could sleep with you and change their mind because we are all humans with free will and if we're not digging something we can bounce morally however such behavior is just you know messed up and i think that it is completely wrong to make somebody believe that you are about to be exclusive when you have no intentions to just to get them in bed but again there is no force involved there is no mistaken identity or anything else that could fall under the parameters of our word by deception which is a prosecutable offense so an example would be if a guy consented to having relations with a woman and he decided to wear protection so that he did not get the woman pregnant and the woman goes ahead and picks holes in the protection so that she could extort child support payments from him. That is clearly illegal. That is uninformed consent that has lifelong consequences. And this is a situation that has actually happened in the past before and has been prosecuted under the lines of fraud. The same is the case when a person knows that they are infected with a disease and do not inform their partner before they go ahead and have unprotected relations. That has happened several times in the past before and people have been prosecuted for it. It actually falls under the parameters of grievous bodily harm. 
In fact, the well-known singer Usher, who famously has herpes, allegedly, allegedly paid a lot of women into silence because he is aware of his condition and proceeds to have relations with them. I mean, for goodness sake, we have all heard or seen a situation in our personal lives throughout this panorama of people knowingly infected with covid and they are willing to infect everybody around them selfishly because they want to go out. So the solution, in my honest opinion, is not to expect everybody to be honest out of the goodness of their heart. Because many people, even down to covid simply just don't hold such values. Affirmative consent should not be confused with personal boundaries. And if your personal boundaries are important to your decision making, effective communication of your personal boundaries and what you need to feel comfortable consenting to the act must be discussed beforehand. There must be verbal communication and nothing should be implied. To conclude, a person can imply something that is not true through their statements, behaviours or acts in order to have relations with another person. Yet, if the person who was deceived would not have had relations with the deceiver if it wasn't for the deception, I know that's a tongue twister. One could argue that the deceiver did not get valid consent for those actions. Right now, the law only covers impersonation and deceptions in the act itself. For instance, somebody can't go ahead and use your back door if you've only agreed to the front. But right now, the laws simply don't protect people beyond the act itself. So, is the ache deep in the womb lands the law surrounding deception and consent? Or the emotional damage that such deception can leave the individuals who are left feeling abused? The fact is, lies for gratification hurt. And almost everybody has experienced something like that at least once in their lifetime. So whilst we can teach young people to show discernment when choosing prospective partners so that they won't get hurt, or maybe we should teach our young people the fundamental basic morality of not lying or misleading to get what they want. White lies are still lies. And white tears are still tears. Oh, oh my God, this saga has been one of the most horrendous things to ever write in my whole entire life. Each day, the story was changing. Each day, more information was coming out and honestly, the whole thing was driving me insane. I would just like to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you guys holding out for me, especially over the past week and a bit where I've been very ill, but thank you for staying around and sticking around. Also, I want to say a massive thank you to my YouTube members as well. I really appreciate you guys as well as the Twitch family. You guys have held strong this week as well. I really appreciate all of you and thank you all for continuing to support me. If you guys would like to join any of these communities, I will leave the links to all of them in the description box down below. Also, one final thank you as well to Atlas VPN for sponsoring yet another video. I really appreciate your continued support. And with that being said, you beautiful, amazing, bad ass bitches. I've had way too much coke, and by coke, I mean Coca Cola. <laughs> it's been Paige. Bye. Bye. I'm gone. Bye. <laughs>